So 
1 times 4 plus 2 times 5 plus 3 times 6. And I'm going to just go ahead and put parentheses to emphasize that we do the multiplication first between the two pairs and then we add. But that's just order of operations, so we don't need to put the parentheses, but I'm just going to emphasize that. case 4 plus 10 plus 18. We're not going to calculate this all out for this question. It's um, not the point, but that would be 32. So u dot v is a number. The magnitude of u and the magnitude of v are the, um, the lengths of Okay. 
Um, so again, if one vector is like this and one vector is like this, the angle between them is going to be this one. That's going to be theta. Okay, so this is the main formula here. Like we said, if you calculate the dot product in this way, matching the pairs of coordinates, multiplying those, and then adding the products together, you get a number. You use the magnitude formula to just find the magnitude of one vector times the magnitude of the other one, um, and then that is equal to cosine of my angle. So then I can divide by the magnitude of u, divide by the magnitude of v, and then take the inverse cosine there. So I guess we can rearrange this. I think this is the cleanest to kind of memorize or kind of get used to, but if I just divided this over and wrote cosine of theta equals u dot v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v, which is just algebra, right? Just dividing and dividing, because it was time, so to move it, I divide by the magnitude of each. This kind of gives me a more uh, direct way of looking at the angle theta. And even more direct would be cosine inverse of this, but this is cool because we can get a couple of special case conclusions from this, actually. So, um, for instance, if u and v are orthogonal, meaning they are perpendicular to each other, so if by some weird coincidence we have that, let's say this is u and this is v, and they are orthogonal, meaning they are perpendicular, so the angle between them is 90 degrees, cosine of 90 degrees, which would be up here, the coordinates of this point, because if this is zero, moving along, 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 this would be 90 degrees, and the coordinate there is 0, 1, so cosine of 90 is zero. This is one of our special angles, right? Um, so zero. So if they are orthogonal and the angle between them is 90 degrees, cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So we would have zero equals u dot v over magnitude of u, magnitude of v. The magnitudes are not going to be zero because they're going to have lengths, right? If the vector exists, it's going to have a length. So these are not zero. If I multiply this over and I multiply this over, so basically using this formula again, um, but basically I would zero times anything is zero. So u dot v is zero. So this actually works both ways. If two a uh, vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular, their dot product is zero. And also, if their dot product is zero, um, they are orthogonal. So you can kind of use that to check. Um, so for instance, if you're doing cross products or you're working with other stuff with vectors, um, the cross product is supposed to be perpendicular to both the original u and v, and you can check that by taking the dot product. So it w works both ways. The dot um, product, if the dot product equals zero, they are orthogonal, and if they are orthogonal, the dot product will be zero, which is not always the case. Like, not all statements work both ways that way, but in this case it is. Um, another cool kind of special case and application of this is if u and v are the same vector, so you can actually just kind of have them both be the same length in the same direction. So if we have both u and v, then um, the angle between them would be zero degrees, and we would have cosine of zero degrees, which would be the x-coordinate of this thing, which would be one zero on the unit circle. So cosine of zero is one, and if u and v are the same, then you would basically just say u dot u, we could substitute, right, or v dot v, whichever you want, but one would equal u dot u over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of u. So wherever I add a v, I'm going to put a u. It doesn't matter. But if I multiply, oops, I meant u. So if I multiply this again, again, this formula is probably easier. u dot u equals the magnitude of u times the magnitude of u cosine of zero, which is one. So um, if you want to find the magnitude of u, so we'd have magnitude of u squared, and I multiply that, is u dot u. 
So another way to find the magnitude of U is to take um, the square root of uh, the square root of U dot U, which if you just worked out the general formulas for the idea of the dot product and the magnitude, uh, you can generalize this anyway, but it comes directly out of this. Um, and we're taking just the positive square root because magnitudes are lengths, so they're going to be positive, so we don't have to do the negative case. But that just kind of falls out of this, letting u and v be the same vector. So that's just a cool little special case and kind of falls out of this. Um, and uh, yeah, so in general, we can just look at this, apply the 90 degrees case, apply if u and v are the same, and get these kind of, um, a lot of times in books and stuff, these are uh, represented as like special or different cases, but they all come from the same thing. So I hope that this was kind of interesting. I know it's a little bit all over the place. If you want to do specific um, practice for 